Hello there, grumpy old fart here. Um, I'm I'm on, on Facebook. I'm a member of a number of groups uh, that are based. You know, they're they're dedicated to Dungeons and Dragons, and there's a lot of good players in there. There's all I've noticed a trend recently of a lot of people who are starting campaigns about their new dungeon masters. They've run a few little missions with with players and they're ready to start what they think is going to be a long-term campaign and that's great amen more power to you um i've been playing for 45 years over 45 years and i've been running them for over 40 years since 79 80 something like that and so uh 41 years anyway uh i i i'm i try to I try not to tell people how to run their game, but this is general advice, okay, from an old hack gamer. Um, whenever a new game is starting, players want to make a character with usable skills and a reasonable chance of survival. And this is a good thing. It's a great thing. It means the players are interested in the game. Um, this lets the players have fun, and that's the point, to have fun, right? Okay. If the game is just a one-shot mission... Any background for your character for any character is going to work. Uh, any kind of a mission starter will suffice. It's just a one-shot thing, right? It's basically the, the backstory is really not that important. But if the game is going to be a serious long-term campaign, multiple scenarios put together with an ultimate end goal, um, I recommend starting the players with just a basic background. Uh, basically, in this, less is better, because they're... Also, I like to start them with a significant disadvantage, because it gives them something to overcome before the main campaign starts. And the reason I do this is, it lets the players discover their characters and create the backstory instead of just writing it out. It gives them an investment in the character before the main campaign starts. And I've given some examples here. Player characters can start out with silver instead of gold, which means the economy in the country is really bad. Uh, player characters start out in an oppressive nation where, where the, it's on the silver standard instead of the gold standard as before, where most major weapons are illegal, such as you know, only maybe allow them, you know, spears, slings, uh, knives, clubs, staffs, so basic stuff only. No bows, no forged weapons, that kind of thing. Um, and this will give them a reason maybe they want to overthrow the tyrant. It's a side thing that the players themselves want to do, besides the campaign that you have planned. Okay. Um, now, when I say starts on the on the silver standard uh, in the in the player's handbook, they have uh, the dice that characters roll to find out how much money they start out with. And it's generally expressed in gold pieces. With this, start it instead of make it gold, make it silver. That means they can buy less. They have less to start with. I noticed in uh, 3.5, and I, I don't. I, I that's the latest edition I've played. I'm not. A, I'm not a huge fan, but I run Advanced Dungeons and Dragons primarily. But I've noticed in in uh, 3.5, they have a lot of really advanced stuff you can get and you have a lot of money to buy equipment with and it's just it 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 gives your character a significant advantage right at the beginning in advanced dungeons and dragons you start out really weak and you work your way up to becoming powerful and it gives your character more of a backstory it gives you an investment in the building of the character and it gives a better flavor to the game that's my opinion um uh, the third uh, possibility that I came up with, uh, player characters start out at 1d4 level. Instead of first level, they're starting out, they can start out, roll a d4, so it's between first and fourth level. But, they start out as slaves. So, for whatever reason, they've been, they're, they're, they're slaves. They were born, either born as, into slavery and taught skills, or they were captured and sold into slavery, that kind of thing, because it's very pro prevalent in primitive societies. And, this will give the player characters the impetus to want to end slavery. You see what I'm saying? 
uh, one of the best campaign campaigns I ever ran. I had a character in, playing in the game. One of my, my friend Bobby was running it. He started out as a slave. His entire thing was he escaped slavery, and then he ended slavery in that in that area. And he did such a good job. Okay, and this was aside from the campaign. Um, check out the uh, the story, the Puppet Master. Same character. Okay, he ended up running multiple kingdoms. Great character, great player. But, you know. Um, and the fourth one, the player characters start out in an area ravaged by a natural disaster. A tornado, flood, whatever, hurricane hit, something. And uh, they, they've got to find supplies and survive. They start out with almost nothing. And they have to, you know, find supplies to survive. And if you... I'm not. This, this isn't by any means all you can do. This, this isn't the end all and be all of disadvantages, but you can come up with your with some of your own ideas. And using these measures at the start of a long campaign will ensure that the players will create a backstory during the game that will make their characters uniquely theirs. Any idiot can write out a backstory for a character. When they create the backstory during the course of the campaign, it's more personal. It's more, it's more real. You see what I'm saying? Something they can sink their teeth into, <laughs> as it were. But <clears throat> regardless of that, I hope anybody who wants to start a campaign does so, and I hope you have years and years of fun with this game, like I have. And again, doesn't matter what the rules are, as long as they apply equally to everybody. And everybody's having fun. Alright? You folks have a good day. God bless one and all.